What up friends, you festering sacks of garbage, and today we are going to be reviewing the new collaboration between Aesop Rock and Blockhead, Garbology. Yes, it finally happened, Ace and Blockhead have finally come together once again to deliver an album full of vibes that only they can. It's been a minute since we got a full-on collaboration between the two other than the, you know, odd single here and there, and this album did not disappoint. Blockhead's beats are as great as ever, and Ace really feels at home over them. There's tons of variety here, fitting that Garbology name, like they just threw whatever they had together and put a little bow on top of it. While Ace is still not exploring the hooks as much as he should, and it is a bit dense just like a lot of Ace's other projects, this project is just incredibly solid and worth listening to just to dissect all the interesting mechanics at work. Now, it is a bit long and I could be here forever, deciphering all the lyrics and all of that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to pick out some of my favorite tracks on here because this album is just so good and I'll let you guys kind of explore the rest that I didn't cover here. The first real song, Jazz Hands, is fantastic with this ethereal and swirling synth that goes all over the place that gradually builds the beat up. The structure of the song is also pretty unique being one long verse that kind of grows and grows until the track ends. I love that jilted guitar and the warm, heavy drums that add texture to the track. Ace has that stream of consciousness style going on, addressing how he's progressed while also wanting to kind of refine and look back to his earlier material. He also touches upon the growing unrest in the US and how police brutality is tearing a lot of communities apart. And I think it's also pretty interesting how he compares, you know, growing as, as a person, as your own self, and fixing a community all kind of start with bold action in ways that make the status quo uncomfortable. Wolf Piss is the only track on this project that I think is a bit weaker than the rest. It's mostly because this is just kind of ace as usual with the static, gritty beat and twinkly synths. Ace's flow is also kind of standard on here, not really evolving in any interesting ways. The chorus has an interesting addition to the beat with a sort of lo-fi orchestral sample. However, Ace's hook here feels a bit off in my opinion. It's not a bad song by any means, however, it feels a bit jagged and it just doesn't flow as smoothly as some of the other tracks. The anxiety and survivalist tendencies of Ace in the lyrics fit this gritty beat, but I feel like the execution and the delivery could have used some work. I love the more moody bass and funk guitar on Ledger Domain, and Ace's flow sounds really smooth over them. That chorus is pretty ominous, and the sort of operatic sample that they add over it adds to the drama in a really great way. The switch up in the guitar and bass during the second verse, along with the addition of the claps, give the song such a dark, driving energy. Ace also does a few flow switches on the second verse, which is really nice and adds to the variety when the track already had a really good progression. The lyrics talk about how Ace still seems to distrust authority, uh, seeing how it all started with his mom and how it also extended to like cops and coaches when he was younger as well. This is done with some pretty cool wordplay and anecdotes from his childhood, especially his skateboarding days when he talks about a cop telling him to get a life and how he's still partial to the wrong crowd. Difficult is by far my favorite song on here. That beat is just too smooth with those horn segments in that groovy bass. The drums have such a pulse to them that sounds really good when Ace just kind of glides over them, and his flows are also just fantastic. The dreamy synths on the chorus and Ace's cadence when he says, it's funny, I'm real easy, it's just impeccable. His apathy towards the status quo on this track is really interesting, especially when he says, every time an influencer offers advice, I feel years coming off of my life. Yet, as he says, he's kind of still a sucker for all of these meaningless things, kind of poking fun at human nature, I guess, how we still entertain things that we don't like at all. All the Smartest People is a pretty amusing intermission track of sorts, kind of similar to Dog at the Door from Spirit World Field Guide. It's a witty recreation and just how awkward Ace is at dealing with other people and how 
his anxiety prevents him from really functioning around other people really well and how he feels more at home in nature. The lo-fi, sludgy, and lazy beat is the perfect backdrop to this story, and I feel like it encapsulates a lot of Ace's personality. His cadence on this track is also hilarious and fits the anecdote perfectly. Now we get to Oh Fudge, and I love the bass presence on this one and the huge emphasis on the piano. It almost kind of feels like Pusha T's song Hard Piano a bit. Those sinister synths add a pretty dark edge to the song, and that chorus brings all of these elements to fruition. It's still pretty smooth, too, showing how Ace and Blockhead are just masters of combining all of these elements seamlessly. Of course, Ace's humor is also on display here, especially when he says, I can't stop sweating, people at the store say, I think that man's melting. It's another track about social anxiety and fearing what people think about you, which is a pretty appreciated lyrical angle. There's this sort of dark fairy tale aspect to more cycles with that sort of groovy bass and mystical synth line. Weirdly enough, I kind of think of like the old Spyro the Dragon soundtracks when I listen to this, which is a huge compliment, by the way. That chorus is really nostalgic sounding, and it feels like something that would come off of his really old records like Float or Labor Days. The lyrics also fit this somber beat, explaining how Ace kind of feels bad that he can't connect with people, but he just feels more comfortable doing things and living on his own. It's pretty much every introvert's struggle, right? There's really interesting beat on Flamingo Pink with this sort of industrial and hard-hitting edge to it. The beat has that sort of gritty and less elegant nature to it, however this like pan flute that's coming in and out, it has a really interesting vibe over a beat like this. That chorus is simple yet catchy as hell, and it's probably one of the best hooks on this thing. It sums up the track's themes of celebrities feeling too self-important and godlike at times. It also contrasts this by Ace explaining how he hasn't really changed much since his younger days. He's still skateboarding and repping for the delinquent kids, just like he's always been. This is primarily suggested by the line where people are laughing because he's different, yet he's laughing because they're all the same. At first glance, this might seem a bit sort of like rudimentary for Aesop Rock. However, looking at the line before, it really brings to light how much this was involved in the skateboarding culture in New York in, you know, the 80s and all of that sort of thing. So, and how a lot of these kids that skateboarded were viewed as delinquents. So I think in that context, this lyric sort of encapsulates how Ace is kind of like a defender for these people. It's a pretty endearing and fun angle that really just shows how grounded Aesop Rock is overall. The final one I wanted to talk about is the ending track, Abandoned Malls. In a way, it kind of sounds like the collaboration that he did with Tobacco with how synth-focused it is. That muffled synth sample and simple beat have this sort of melancholic and nostalgic sound as Ace is kind of like looking back on his life and how he overcame a lot of different struggles. He's also sort of appreciating all of the good that's been happening to him too. It's especially bittersweet because the track directly talks about his friend Kurt Hayashi who unfortunately died pretty recently and how even in his death he still is you know teaching his daughter how to skateboard and he feels like he still has that connection with Kurt even if indirectly. I feel like this kind of sums up Ace's life philosophy almost, sort of taking the good and the bad and living in the present even if it is sometimes a struggle to break free of that reminiscence. Of course there's other tracks on the record that I didn't talk about but like I said I'd be here forever if I were to cover everything. It's a perfect example of Ace and Blockhead at their best, and to be honest, this is probably Ace's best project since The Impossible Kid, maybe even None Shall Pass. The beats are layered and varied, Ace's lyrics are among the best they've ever been, and the chemistry between these two is undeniable. Ace still does have a problem of some of his flow sounding a bit samey, and his hooks recently just haven't been as impactful or memorable as he had on None Shall Pass. However, they are more varied than a lot of his more recent projects on this album, so I think that does count for something. And in my opinion, it's almost not even noticeable when you're listening to the record because the beats and the lyricism and just his flows in general are so good. I just really want him to put a bit more emphasis on the hooks and try a few more flows here and there. If he did that, this project would have been a 10 probably. But because he didn't, <laughs> I am feeling a light 9 on Aesop Rock and Blockhead's Garbology. 
Of course, we do have to talk about album covers on this show. And in my opinion, the only thing they needed to change here, get rid of the text on the album cover. It's a great image. It sums up the album well. It has that sort of quirky indie DIY aesthetic to it. I just don't think the font choice was very good. And the weird little beginner's Photoshop text uh, orientation up there, it's not the greatest look. So just remove the text, keep the image, perfect album cover. Of course, those are just my thoughts on this new Aesop Rock and Blockhead collaboration. What did you guys think? Did you also agree that this is some of his best work that he's done in quite a while? Or was this one just not really doing much for you? Let me know. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell if you're not human garbage. And until the next one, farewell.